Um, good evening. How y'all doing today? My name is Henry Kakula Jr. Thank you for your time. And the reason why I am emailing you about this situation, if you're a professor, is that last year I bought a brand new home. A couple years ago, I bought a brand new home in Katy, Texas. My home was vandalized and demolished on the first floor on in what is probably considered an alleged hate crime. And after that, the insurance company who contractors, they sent out to my house that damaged my house and stole all the floors, all the cabinets out the house. It was filed in court. And what occurred was Greg Abbott appointed Susan Brown, who is over the judges in Harris County and some other counties. And she has been helping the other party to hide what actually occurred, which has led to a lot of strange things that I have never thought I'll see in my life in a courtroom. The thing that makes this very unique is that I create, I run an education company. I create content like Black Lives Matter, put this book out when I think George Floyd had died. And this book was like number one on Amazon for probably about over like 40 weeks. And I self-published it pretty much. And so the issue was this, with this is that this book ended up in a lot of school districts, HISD, different schools, Indiana, and a lot of kids like it. It's UT, right? I went to UT and I put black kids on front of UT because it's not a high representation of black kids at UT. And so next thing I have noticed is that in court, when I have been in court, I have noticed that a lot of prominent African Americans in Harris County are taken advantage of in the court system. And the next thing I noticed was that the insurance company, their claim is open. And so I told the attorney that Karen Markson, I cannot do EUO with you because I have, um, you know, dyslexia and ADHD. And it's not a good idea to do that without accommodations and my representative and all that in front of you. She denied that as well. And then during the hearing, Karen Markson was calling for, she called for her own personal relative to come to the hearing with a weapon and said that she feared for her life. So it was very abnormal to see someone call for their own private relative to come to an EO with a weapon. And then it just went downhill from there uh, Karen Markinson is from this little town in Oklahoma, ski or something that they have KKK parades, a lot of big population of Ku Klux Klan members. So I mentioned to the law firm, I emailed them, I told the partners, Crawford and somebody else, that could you please assign somebody else to the actual case because there's a, I know there's a race issue and I did not want to deal with that. I have been a teacher with Teach for America. I have won Young Alumni of the Year. I have won scholarship from the State Bar um, for my essay on racial, you know, talking about injustices. You know, I, I produce a lot of content, different things like that. So I kind of, I, I notice when people kind of have struggled with race. They have, you know, they're very prejudiced. And I notice that. And then the issue that became apparent was that she was just filing false pleadings, just making stuff up, just doing things that, you know, hate to say this, that are typical of what a Karen is. You know, Karen, if you know what that is, you understand if you Google that. After that standpoint, the case that was filed had a binding stipulation on file for under 75000 because... You know, get it out the way, get a little probably sub summary judgment, get the case out the way. And Karen moved the case up to federal court after she wasn't prepared for a hearing or something like that. And so the thing that became awkward was that all the lawyers in the courtroom were like, why are you moving a case up to federal court that has a binding stipulation on file? Because I passed civil procedure and that's 1332, you know, team is a good school. 1332. So why are you moving it up? Because also, 
ASI Lloyds is registered in Texas, incorporated registered in Texas. And there's another attorney by the name of Tony Busby. He actually had a case moved back down from federal court because he highlighted that they were registered in Texas. You know, domicile in Texas. You know, you can be domiciled in two different states, but you you served in Texas. So the next issue became apparent was that I hired an attorney, I paid an attorney, you know, $5,000 to do a motion for a man. The attorney stated that he was afraid pretty much to practice in Judge Hittner's court. Uh, Judge Hittner was appointed by Ronald Reagan. I was a government major. Ronald Reagan was, you know, pretty much heavily endorsed by, he was endorsed by Ku Klux Klan twice. Grand Wizards and all that stated that they loved how his stuff read perfectly like a Klansman wrote it. So it became apparent that other African-American lawyers stated the same thing. They couldn't work in Judge Hittner's court. And so you got a lady from a town with a bunch of Ku Klux Klan members and you got a judge who's appointed by Ronald Reagan, who was endorsed by Ku Klux Klan. And then you have Susan Brown, who is in Harris County, who's over it, who went to Texas A&M, who has a background of doing racial things, like she arrested a Hispanic lady in court for saying amen. So you have those all together. Black History Month, February, I think I was fined, as a plaintiff, I was fined over 300K. And these were like in ex parte hearings that I didn't get to participate in. So right away, I knew something was wrong. Next issue comes apparent that I find another attorney, another attorney, they hold on pretty much months. They're on the case. They never file in. Day before, oh, they're like, oh, they can't file in. X, Y, Z, during that week, I got a choice. I got to show up. I'm prepared because my attorney held on. Retainer signed. They signed three different retainers. They didn't show up. They started making excuses. Didn't make sense. Uh, Robert, uh, whatever, Jane, he started making excuses too. I'm like, you got paid, retainer, 5000 Do your remand. I don't know what's going on. So pretty much the attorneys started to hand, out, hand, hand at you know, Judge Hittner stuff. And Judge Hittner did not want to remove the case back down. And then Karen would just like file false, fictitious pleadings. And I would, I would just be forced to file back. And I have exhibits, affidavits, I think, with some of them. He would just deny it. And he has a reputation for doing that. It's on online. So I knew what it was because I would not file. I would not practice in federal court, pro se. Like, I think that's kind of, I don't know. That's a little risky. The judges are life appointed. They can do, they don't have to worry about voting. So why would I be in front of you? No bar degree number. Then after that, Karen continues to file more pleadings that are filed that are false. Now I get a $127K, $126,000 um, court fee, which didn't make any sense because I'm like, it's no subject matter jurisdiction, no diversity. You're refusing to remand your, remove yourself off the case. You refuse to recuse yourself. You refuse my non suit. I even non suited the case to refuse it. And then she's like, oh, she needs to seal the files because she's afraid of me. And then she starts like insulting me on company email, calling me a loser. Like I have all that stuff. I'll probably drop it down and link. So it just continues on. And this lady posts my medical records publicly. She posts my driver's license, gun license. I don't own any weapons. And, and then it gets worse where my child was living with me. And after the house got messed up, they actually went and got the, they was actually having discovery with her privately and getting items from her when she broke in my house. And then they had a little agreement where they would get her, they got her an attorney called Bridget Nance and then Bridget Nance and Susan Brown, when they are in front of each other, they'll be not impartial, got audio for that too. she will be helping her out. And so the agreement was you help us out and we will help you keep the child away from him. And then the next thing became apparent was that she filed child support. Her child support got non-suited. I filed custody and visitation temporary. I didn't even, the judge didn't even sign like a proper order. And when you pay, when I did attempt to pay child support, 
like my money gets refunded, refunded back. So I never seen that in my life because parents on, I was in child support court with Greg Abbott, the AG. So I was just like, okay, I don't know what's going on, but I, I just saw that y'all pardoned someone for, you know, the whole Black Lives Matter protester. But the other AJ Brown, he had three trials and that's beyond me, but that didn't seem right. He didn't get pardoned, but hey. So that's where we at right now. Um, Karen also filed another false pleading to try to seize my sister and brother's account and my parents' houses, saying that I have money and assets in their accounts. It's just, it's just like, yeah. I asked Karen, I asked her, I said, hey, you know, send me the invoice for lawyer fees. I'll I'll send it to somebody, get a donor to pay for it. And she refused. And then she comes back in court and lies and say, I never made any attempt. And I'll send that too. So at this point, I asked her law firm several times. I think they even got sued because you do not post people private documents. She would take it privately from a private sealed place and post it publicly. Like she just posted something yesterday from a child case and post it publicly because she does that. She has like low temperament. So I noticed that she has this issue, emotional issue where she gets mad and she takes my private sensitive documents in the file and she posts it publicly to try to harm my reputation. And I'm like, hey, that's not fair. That's not right. You don't do that. So now we're at the standpoint where I'm letting the law firm know that I'm going to file a restraining order on Karen. And if anything happens to any of my relative accounts, because there's no subject matter jurisdiction, um, there's no diversity, and this is all pretty much borderline public corruption, unless Judge Hitner is, is now forgetting that we are in 2024, we're not in Jim Crow time anymore. So now we're looking at what's going on. And you are aware that it's improper. You are aware of the fact that my signature was forged on documents that Karen Markison stole from me. And the forensic documents, experts, two of them show that it was forged. And then the board for Harris County, I mean, for the state of Texas, they actually found possible wrongdoing that the contractor attorney that she gifted to him and he forged it for impossible wrongdoing in that. So the issue that I'm having is pretty much, you know, is with the people that Greg Abbott appointed. I don't have issues with other, like the Supreme Court of Texas. I don't have issues with them. They they see it, but when it gets to judge, I mean, when it gets to Greg Abbott's um, people, they don't see it. So that's real awkward to me. So I'm just asking y'all on here if, you know, if you can look at yes or no question, if you can determine that there's no subject matter jurisdiction because there's a binding simulation under file for 75K, they're registered in Texas, they were served in Texas, you know, y'all professors, y'all teach for a living, y'all real smart, y'all are subject matter experts, but all the other lawyers said it, but it just feel a little bit better to see a yes or no, because Judge Hittner has a uh, reputation for, you know, doing his own thing, his own style, and bullying people too. Because when I came to court, I told him that I did not want to go far. I did not want to partake in the hearing because I needed a judge. I needed a lawyer. And he forced me to go under oath. And then the, the reporter... You know, I have to record my hearings because I have, you know, I have dyslexia and all that, ADHD, ADHD. So I recorded my audio. I get my own transcripts from my own person. It didn't match up. The words were different. And I'm like, why are you switching my words around to make it seem like I said something else? She switched the words around to make it seem like I said that I graduated in the honors program from UT with accommodations. So I'm just like, that's a little very unethical that you're switching words around, Monica. And then the other person in his court, the manager or whoever, he inflated the demand number to 75 million. And I'm like, I didn't ask for 75 million. There's a binding stipulation on file. Why you can't make it match? 
that he changes down to 75,000, but he doesn't want to make it the actual number. Then he's like, oh, he has to round it up. So I'm just like, that's very awkward. You know, it's just very unusual. And I don't know what's going on if it's because of this. I mean, but this is stuff that I watch a lot of court and I do not see court going on like this. But I can tell you that it's a lot of torts going on, a lot of civil rights being violated. Uh, as another judge for the contractor, he refuses. He signed an order stating that I can't record or I can be held in contempt of the court. But my accommodations he has states that I get to record and all that stuff. And, you know, I need to do I need to have accommodations. And then he has what else he has been doing? He has had ex parte hearings and he has fined me over 200K in ex parte hearings and tried to label me fictitious litigant and it didn't I didn't qualify like how do we get to the end of the case before trial and I just become fictitious with no new open cases doesn't make sense but that's that and on top of that the I had a fee waiver on file because my house got demolished I'm indigent and I think my daughter's on Medicaid, so you qualify under Rule 145. So the judge intentionally was charging me, you know, char he signed my fee waiver, and then he had a hearing that I didn't participate in. And he's fine, and then I I'm now owing $24,000 in court fees. And then the court, you know, people told me that they filed a false report for disorderly conduct when I have witnesses and everyone's there, it's all recorded. And then Precinct 1, they don't want to close it. And then I think Karen filed a, a police report, too, for harassment, which didn't make any sense, just in bad faith. So those are things I, I have to deal with. And I'm not suited to the case for a reason. It's like you see the corruption and all that going on. Why would you want to participate? It just makes it worse. You know, when you have ADHD, you got dyslexia, then you got a, you got people associated with hate groups. Because people who are not associated with hate groups and who are not prejudiced towards people don't act like that. So that's the thing you have to understand. It's, the issue is that you can tie these people back to hate groups. And that's why some of them act like that. But if you can help, yes or no. If there's diversity, subject matter jurisdiction, because the judge is ruling... And Karen was trying to file abstract judgments on my property illegally because that's corruption. We all know that. So I'm holding um, both of the law firms, both of y'all responsible for that. Because if other attorneys see it, you know what's going on. So if you did get a little payment on the side, please get your money back. Thank you. Have a great day. Um, name is Henry Kakula and thank you for watching this message. No threats were made, just being calm and respectful.